But did you like that? They, uh, you actually brought something that hit me back with, with my series. But did mm-hmm. you like that I, I brought the fact that mo- something that most people don't think about? The magazine industry is fucking dying right now. The magazine industry has been dead for years. It's, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I listen, I, I go to a Barnes and Noble and there's that magazine out. It is a ghost town. No one's over there. No it's, one buys magazines anymore. The problem with magazines, and the first time I noticed this <clears throat> was in 2009. I went into the store to pick up a copy of Wizard Magazine. Mm-hmm. Wizard was still a magazine back then. They were Wizard was still a company back then. Yeah. Um, the magazine was five dollars, which was two dollars higher than it used to be. It was four ninety nine. Used to be two ninety nine, and it was half of the size it used to be. The comic price guide was gone. A lot of the regular fe- monthly features of the magazine were gone. It, it was trimmed down to like eighty pages or something like that. Mm-hmm. So they they doubled their price for less product. And that's what a lot of magazines started to do because print media became very expensive. And even, even at the at the rates that they, I mean, even at the numbers that they were printing magazines, the printing rates went up and interest in magazines went down as the internet, you know, exploded because you didn't have to wait anymore till next month's magazine to get the latest scoop on on the news, yeah, it's right yeah, there. You know, like, like I didn't have to wait for Fangoria next month to find out that Terrifier Three's trailer dropped today. You but know, that's what I said about Rue Morgue. I was like, yeah. I was saying that people are like, well, they're attached. I'm like, but they're it's a failing business. Yeah, the, Rue Morgue, Rue Morgue hasn't been a thing since the early 2000s. None, none of them have. I thought they went out of business already. I'm being serious. I didn't know until that competition that they were still around. Yeah. Fangoria, they went out of business. Fangoria publishes, I think, six times a year now. Um, I get emails from them all the time and, and they were weird because I reached out to them asking about ad space and uh, got a weird response from them. But now I get emails from them all the time like, oh, you might so, want to buy this. You might want to buy that. And it's like, no, I, I don't want to buy anything. I, I want <laughs> I, I want to be able to put my my company, my, my publishing house <laughs> yeah. uh, in, in your horror magazine. That's that's what I want to do. Um yeah, but no one reads them anymore. So like it's, it's like point point they make their money off of ads now, but no yeah. one reads them to see your ad. So like it's pointless. It's, it's... they'll be gone. Another ten years, that magazine rack will be empty. They'll they'll yeah. have to they'll have to fill it with something else, because it, the the prices continue to go up, which, which is again it's unavoidable. Print print prices have gone. That up. mean also a year for more to get six magazines a year. I mean no, for thanks. six magazines a year. That's seventy fucking dollars. Who the fuck no, is paying that? No yeah, one. Nobody. Nobody's paying that. I mean, it got it got so bad with Wizard at the end that they were like, it's twenty four ninety nine a year, or you can get four years for thirty nine ninety nine. Or something like some, wow. like some really good deal mm-hmm. if you were you confident like, that the magazine was still going to be around four years from now. Exactly. Which as it turns out, they weren't. Yeah. Um, you know, they they I don't know the full story of what happened with them, but they uh, they certainly fell from lofty heights because for a while Wizard was was the comics industry. Mm-hmm. All the conventions were Wizard World conventions. I used to have Wizard World because I mean I, I collect comics, so I always wanted to yep. look at their PBG to see how much yep. the comics worth and so forth. Oh, yeah. And I agree, they took that completely out of magazine. I'm like, what the fuck do I got now? Like you know, that was the main reason I got them. One of the main reasons I got them. Yeah, well, remember they used to have. Toy Price Guide and Comic Book Price Guide. And then they Uh took the Toy Price Guide out and they spun it off into another magazine, which was fine. Toy Fair was fun, too. But then Wizard got rid of the Comic Price Guide, and it was like, okay, so now you're just pitching us comic books that may or may not come out, may or may not come out on time, because this was the, you know, late 2000s. The comic industry was in a rough spot. Um, You know, and that much is relevant because... Iron Man made a billion dollars. I didn't see a billion. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. I didn't see a billion dollars in sales in the comic industry in 2008. You can't find comic books anymore. Like you'd be able to find comic books in bookstores. You have to literally go to a comic book shop to find comic books. Anymore. And and those are are getting to be few and far between yep. too, because that industry, uh, it 
it didn't it didn't do anything to foster uh, the next generation of readers and marvel while they were able to capture the film audience although even that's waning i don't know if you saw the opening weekend from the marvels um you know yeah you, you can't make movies for audiences that you think are out there they're not out there and and they continue to prove this time and time again but nobody's paying attention <laughs> i don't know what the hell feige's doing but 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 even when it comes to i was just actually talking to someone before in the interview and i was saying um it was a, a woman and she was saying that a lot of them make movies and toys and this and that. We had a discussion about this, that they think that women are going to want to watch or or women want, and they don't, and they fail. Yep. There there are there are discount stores all over the country filled with Disney cast-off products from, from Star Wars, from Marvel to, to Pixar, to you know, just stuff that they thought there was an audience for. I hate to say it, but Disney needs to stop pandering. They yep. need to... You know, like like there's this whole thing, there was this whole back and forth about the new Snow White movie, and it's like, oh well, you know, the prince, you know, he kisses her when you know she doesn't consent. She was fucking dead. It wasn't a, it, it wasn't a, oh she's gonna go into a deep. No, it was a poison apple. She was fucking dead, and there's no consent when you're dead. Okay, <laughs> he saved her life. It wasn't an act of sexual assault. I'm sorry to say. And people want to come after me for that. That's fine. But let's come on. <laughs> it's like they were bitching about the little mermaid. Like they changed her race. Yeah. I'm like, no, they didn't. She's still a mermaid, assholes. <laughs> but even like the Marvels, like, like the new Marvel movies, like the, the whole stink is that people are not seeing this movie because it's a black woman who directed the movie. A, and then they're saying because the leading cast are all women. People but don't. Heard, but by her, it's a bad movie. It's not a good movie, from what I've heard. I've heard the it's same a thing. Bad movie. So, like, no matter who made a fucking movie and who the cast was, yeah. it's a bad movie. And people don't like Brie Larson as Captain Marvel. Nobody wants to say it, but I it's fell true. I saw Captain Marvel <laughs> in the movie theater, the original one, and I fell asleep. There was a, no need for theater. that. There fell asleep. No need for that movie. Fell asleep, and I haven't fell asleep doing a Marvel movie ever. That movie, there was no need for that movie. There was no need for the Black Widow movie. And and no. then people say, oh, well, it's the, all the women lead. No, Black Widow has been a character in the Marvel Universe for the last 80 years. You know how many comic books she's led on her own? None. None. There's a reason for that. She gets the occasional miniseries, but she's never had it. And if she, if she has, since I stopped paying attention to comics, <laughs> it certainly hasn't been a very long-lasting series because I've yeah. never heard anything about it. So... She there's she is a team player and there's nothing wrong with being a team player when you're building a shared universe. Mm -hmm. There need to be team players. Not mm -hmm. everybody can be Captain America. We need a Hawkeye. It, it's it's yeah. as simple as that. We need Black Widow. We need Agent Carter. We we need those characters to fill in the universe. But that doesn't mean that they're strong enough to carry their own movie. Correct. And 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 that's what happened with Black Widow. That's what happened with with. The, with Captain Marvel, and unfortunately, it's it's what's happened with the Marvels. Mm -hmm. Disney thinks that there's an audience out there for this, and it, it's just not true. I was in. I mean, I mean, I know every. I was watching someone, uh, watching a YouTuber that I love, and he's pretty much honest. And he said um, that you know men are being called misogynistic for not watching this movie. And he said he went to the movie theater, and the movie theater was packed with men, I mean, packed with individuals. And he said. Guess how many women he saw in the movie theater? Zero. So he said, well, well, okay, so if men are not supporting, then why aren't women supporting the, the movie? Thank you. Because that audience doesn't exist no matter how much Disney wants it to. It's as I'm simple not, as that. I'm not saying that women do not enjoy superhero movies. Oh, so forth. absolutely. My they wife, my wife loves that scene in Iron Man. Every woman I know loves that scene and you know the scene i'm talking about yes. loves that scene in iron every woman i know every straight yes. woman i know every curious woman i know yes. they all love that scene so that's but, but, but that's but, not the marvels that that's not why they went to see iron man but they didn't go to see the marvel it's it's, it's because because the, the the marvels is saying 
hey, women, this is yours. This is for you. you you're supposed to like this. Yeah. We, we put a bunch of women in here, and you're supposed to like this. And we, I don't think women like that. No. No. John Mulaney, the comic John Mulaney said it best. He said, when I, I had a, he's like, the first time I had a serious girlfriend, I had a lot of friends in my life who were girls. And I thought to myself, well, they're girls. She's a girl. They'll get along. <laughs> you can't force women to do stuff. You just can't. Every time you try, they'll give you the finger. And and that's that's what happened. I think that's part of what happened with this movie. But so anyway, yeah, Marvel's yes. just um <laughs> so we were con- about, uh, contest. So we're, so we're talking about getting kids to read. Yes. Yes. Getting kids to read. Yes. And it's an amazing now, how can kids if someone has their I hope kids are not watching my my channel but they are i mean <laughs> but uh but it, but but if someone wanted to get their kid in how, how would they go by doing okay. so um if if one of the viewers uh if you have a child who does enjoy reading ya horror um you can reach out to me at uh well the easiest way to do it is just to email me at psychotoxinpress.com or you can message me on Facebook, uh, also at Psychotoxin Press. Um, just hit me up. Let me know that you're interested. I will send you out a copy. The deadline is November 30th. We'll announce the winner on December the 6th. And I think the book comes out the week after that. Okay. And I'll have your email. And Christopher's yep. email is down in the description, guys. Um, so, you know, the more the merrier. Um, we're, we are limiting it uh, between the ages of 11 and 16. Um, you know, because so, it's that nice... And that nice YA, you know, age range. Um, again, 250 words to 500 words, but I'm not, you know, I'm not a stickler. If if it's a if it's a fun review and it's 190 words, or yeah, you know, I'm I'm not gonna discard. You know, there were it's kids, and I want kids to enjoy this because if it works, then we'll do it again. You know, and 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 like I said, anything I can do to help the kids get get kids reading, uh, I'm down for that. So. That's uh, that's the contest, and uh, I'm got, I know I know we've already had a few uh, a few submissions come in. I've seen uh, right. talked to a couple of the authors uh, who have kids, and uh, they were excited to hear about it. Everybody seems like you said. Everybody seems to think, you know, this is a great idea. So it's an amazing idea. Let's see. Let's see how it works. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this will be the start of something fun because, uh, you know, one of my goals for the company um, is to have a book on a scholastic book fair table. Because that, those book fairs, and uh, it was weird because I, I did a local library event last weekend uh, in Norwalk, uh, which is where I grew up. It's about 15 minutes from where I live now, but it's where I grew up. And my passion for reading was born in that library, in the children's section of that library. So when I go back there for things now, um, as an author or as a publisher or it's so weird for me to see because well you know i mean the building has been updated you know with computers no more catalog card catalogs you know stuff like that the layout is still the same so i can still go upstairs and i can walk into the children's library and i can still feel like you know this is where it all started for me um so you know so so with that and then with the scholastic book fairs at school that was always one of the most exciting times of the year when we got we used to get those scholastic order forms and we can order we would order like two books and then have to wait what was probably only a few weeks but when you're a little kid you know forever um and then the books would come in and you'd be able to get on so so that's one of my goals for the company is is to publish a ya book um that's good enough to to be put on a table at a scholastic book fair and and maybe i just love those book fairs man when i was a kid i used to get you know, so excited man I, I, I mean that's how I goosebumps man i I'm tell you, i i i grew up in the era of rl sign goosebumps i used to love goosebumps i mean they got me excited for reading i would i would sit there get home and crack that bad boy open and read it for hours until i finish it and, and i was ready for my next one man i mean it was and that's passion, and and yes. that's that's what I hope to be able to inspire, because I you know if one kid someday buys a book off of a scholastic table that I published, you know, and I had a hand in getting into that kid's hand, and that kid goes on to you know become a writer or become you know, I mean I can't ask for much more. Like I can't ask for any more of a life well lived, in my opinion. 
then to accomplish, you know, for that to be my goal, to inspire a generation of kids to go on and create their own worlds and everything. So that's, you know, I'm probably sounding sentimental, but, you know, I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting older and, uh, you know, I, I just want to be able to, it's been, it, it's so wonderful to have the team around me that I have, because what you guys do helps me to justify that I'm on the right path. Like talking to you and doing the show, um, obviously I must have something interesting to say because you keep having me on. So okay. if I was just babbling, you know, which I know not as bad as some people, <laughs> I, I I told you it was going to be quiet something right now, Christopher. It's, it's, it a, it's a lot quiet right now. No joking. It really is. <laughs> no, I I love him to death. He has been. Um, I like heart. He's been a great a, a great mentor to me, and even in this short period of time. Um, what I've learned from him about publishing, what I've learned from him uh, about marketing, um, I'm lucky. You know, I'm, I'm very lucky that he was interested in what I was interested enough in what I was doing to be able to be like, yeah, man, let's work together. And, you know, we did American Horror, you know, uh, Horror Story book um, and the stuff that we've got coming up, Big Book of Dahmer and, and all of that stuff. Uh, the the Boneyard Toxin, uh, Boneyard Toxic or Boneyard Toxin Sorry. imprint is going to help push out some, uh, you know, some really cool extreme horror type stuff. Um, so yeah, you know, I've been, I've been fortunate and, and I've been lucky that, that him and I have kind of come together and I was lucky enough to write um, the intro, the new intro for the, the new edition of uh, Poems for the Dead. And, and one of the things that I mentioned in there is that over the, over the period of time that him and I have worked together, every time that we talk, I know him better. And I know I'm better. And then I read Poems for the Dead. And it was it's heartbreaking. It's 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 the emotions are so real. And so by the time I was done and in the and the process of reassembling that book was not an easy task. I was working with Quark files from the 90s. And Quark is you know, first off, it's a Mac program. So there's that. I work on a PC, so there was that whole problem. Um, but what a, it was, it was a pain in the ass. But the the feelings and the emotions and everything are so raw and so powerful behind it that now that I've done the work on it, now that I've read the work, and now that I've engrossed myself in it, I really do feel like I know him now, and uh, which is great because we really are firing on all cylinders, him and I. Um, we've got some really cool stuff that we've been talking about and and some really neat projects in the works. And and he motivates me to to do things, uh, you know, to learn a, a new way of doing things. And I'm motivating him to, you know, get back into this and, and be Hart Fisher and be, you know, be, be that image and and spread the word and, and everything. And, and I think that... Uh, this next year, 2024, is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a good time. We're going to take Boneyard, Boneyard Press and, and American Horrors and Psychotoxin and everybody out on the road. And we're going to go out and meet the people and, uh, you know, get get books in hands and, and you know, get kids and reading. And there's a ton of stuff going on. Don't so. forget to do the partnership with the Horror Room because we and, got something that yes. we're going to reveal next year that's going to be fucking game changing. It's going to be great, and and I've been thinking about that a lot too, and and I've got some got some good good plans. So next year is going to be a big year, man. We're gonna we're gonna take indie horror, we're gonna bump it up, and uh, we're gonna get the community in a in a good place, and and get everybody working together, and and try to put all this crap and this, you know, just uh, there's uh, fighting amongst ourselves and or or being jealous or any of that stuff isn't helping anybody. Yeah. You know, like, like it, you, you know, it's like it, you're going to find like if I go on and I and let's say I, I go on and I attack some author, which there's no reason for me to do. But if I was to do that, all that's going to happen is that there's going to be a, a group of people who agree with them on their side. And there's going to be a group of people who agree with me on my side. And all that's going to do is lend into endless fucking bickering and nothing gets done. And then nobody likes each other. Nobody wants to talk to each other. And, and we have to talk to each other because as a whole, as a collective, we could make progressive change in the horror world. We could we could we can change the way that things are done. We can get the the respect for the genre that so many other genres have 
um, because the work is there, the people are there, the the community. If we can all come together and work together and 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 subsist, we can really change. I really do believe that we can change the way that the horror industry works. I want to. You know, I mean, it, it. There's always been that period of time in all the genres where generational changes happened, and you know what I'm seeing from the the younger people now is terribly exciting. And, it is. And you know, I'm I'm glad that I'm able to work with people. I'm glad that I'm able to to find these new writers, these new voices, and share them with everybody because I really think a lot of these a lot of these people and and I want to call them kids, but I mean. It, I'm almost 50. So, you know, I mean, when you're in your 20s, you know, yeah. I, I was, you know, but I mean, so it's like, it's very exciting to see what they're turning out and the potential that they have and to be able to see like, hey, you know, a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, this person could change everything we know about what we do. And that's, that's what I, that's why I get up in the morning. That's, that's my goal is to, is to find the voices that are going to take this whole thing and just, make it you know make it beyond anything that you and i can impossibly imagine and and that's exciting to me and and if i get to be the littlest part if i get to be the light on the kindling that that you know burst into you know whatever the case i'm happy to be involved and uh you know i'm i'm here to help everybody that i can and you know i'm i'm lucky to have the folks around me and and like i said you guys uh, you know, including you, Travis, you you have been a tremendous uh, you've been a help to me. You've been helped getting the word out on what we do. And, you know, and and like I said, at the start of this whole thing, you know, what you've done in exposing the scam that you've done, you're getting the attention that you deserve. And, and I know there's some raggedy assholes that need to be dealt with. <laughs> um, but you know what, though, they can they can eat a dick Fuck because them. really, you know, they're going to yeah. hate. And it's like, and I never understood that stuff like that because it's like they're not paying your bills. Why, why, why are you gonna ride the jock like that if they're not paying your bill? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. I know you may not like hearing the truth, and you're probably connected to somebody who's connected to somebody. I'm sure there's some bullshit involved because otherwise, what is the point? Why would you care? Yeah, exactly. Well, if it doesn't, and this is the thing that's been killing me lately. It's like I see all this shit, and it's like if it doesn't directly affect you in in any way. Why do you Not care? At all. <laughs> Why do you care? What, exactly. what, what, do you have so much energy in your life, so much free time, that you can choose to use that energy and devote that time to doing something stupid like that, as opposed to positively contributing to your community? I just don't understand it. it. Makes no so, sense. But but you did a tremendous job again on those videos, and I know that you and Hart are going to be talking about it. Um, he's looking forward to that. Um, we're on the grow, my man. Like I said, new uh, producer for American Horrors Network. So I'll be out there. If you know, you and I talked about some indie stuff earlier. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm ready, man. I am I am ready to take this to the next level. I'm ready to get people's names out there. And, and let's let's just take this. You know, let's do what we can do and, and, and make sure that, you know, it's done right. And that's the important. And also, too, guys, listen, pay attention to my channel because there's a lot of psychotoxin exclusive authors that I've interviewed that's going to be coming up in the next couple of days. These are some young, hungry authors with some great work. I mean, definitely check out the interviews and check out their work as well. Now, Christopher, I'm going I'm to toss two questions to you. One's going to sure. be a hardball and one's going to be a softball <laughs> question. And a hardball, yeah. and then, and a hardball question might, might get you in trouble. All right. So who, who, which one do you want first? The hardball or the Give softball? Give me the hard one. What do you got? All right. Do you think Kane Hodder knows that it's a scam? <laughs> okay. Um, here's what I think. As as far and I've never met Kane Hodder. I, I I know I I know who he is because I'm in the horror community. That that I I grew up watching Friday the Thirteenth. Um, yeah, you know, I, I grew up watching that series. Yes, it's true. He he was a good Jason in the worst Friday the Thirteenth movies. I'll agree with that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I love Jason Goes to Hell. It's ridiculous as hell. Um, I also love Jason X because that that fucking frozen head scene. You can't not. I mean, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that I'm I'm surprised. Let me put it this way. Okay. If it happens again, mm-hmm. I will be very disappointed. Because at the end of the first year, let's pretend 
Okay, and 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 because we don't we don't really know. So let let's mm-hmm. pretend that when they started the whole thing the first year, they reached out to the Buffalo Bill House guy, they reached out to Rue Morg for some reason, they reached out to Kane Hodder, and they said, hey, we want to do this, we're going to go on the internet, you know, use it on Facebook, blah 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 blah, and here's however much money, and and from what I'm hearing, the the number that you quoted for him. It might be significantly less than that. Um, just, I, I, I've heard mention of a number, and it's kind of embarrassing. So, I, and I don't want, I don't, I don't <laughs> I want to mention. That. I hope that. Can you use his face and his name? So, <laughs> okay. So, I think that the first year, mm-hmm. it was fine, and and there was bull, and we know, and we know there was bullshit involved in the first year. We we, we know that, but. I think that the at the the exposure of said bullshit in that first year probably happened at a time after which the contracts were signed for the second competition. And here's one thing I I can tell you. Um, I would imagine that Kane Hodder is not a fan of having to litigate himself out of a contract for something like this. I would like to think that <clears throat> the paperwork was already signed. There was nothing he could do about it. Now he knows. Why he hasn't spoken out about it, I would be willing to bet, is is legality. There's probably an NDA or something involved in the contract. Because remember, he's not going to do a fucking yeah. thing without a contract. He's, sure. he's not going to put his face, which, which is actually weird because I saw him do an ad for a fan film. Yeah. You know, which is great. I mean, right on, dude. Very great. Awesome. Why weren't you talking about this competition that you're the face of? It's an excellent question. And and my guess would be is that there is probably legalities involved. There is probably an NDA. There was probably something that prevented him from speaking out against the contest in any way, shape or form. There probably is something still in place that prevents him from speaking out against it. But let's see what happens next year. If they do this again, if they do this again, and he's still involved, then yeah, that's a problem. And then at that point, a serious conversation needs to be had about what, you know, what his role is. Because I honestly think that, and like I said, I've never met the dude, so I don't know him. I've, I've, I saw, there was a great documentary about him. He seems like a genuinely nice guy. Nice guy. I've met him twice. Uh, nice guy. You know, seems to love the fans, you know, which is great. He, he He's one of those cats who acknowledges that he's famous for a reason. And he and he appreciates that. And that's why he does what he does. He does. You know, and, and he needs money. I mean, listen, we all need money. If somebody was going to pay me five thousand dollars a weekend, plus a hotel, plus a food, you know, thing, plus I get to keep the money I make from signing. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go yeah. to where you want me to go for five grand. You know, a hotel room, food, and the money I get to keep from side. Absolutely, I'll show up anywhere you want. Mm-hmm. And I'm nobody at this point. A year from now, maybe a different story, but I'm not Kane Hodder, you know? Yeah. So, but I think I would imagine if the people running this this thing are in any way, shape, or form smart, and, and you have to be to run a scam like this, um, there's, a, there's definitely a legality involved somewhere. I have no doubt from from... The little bit of time I spent studying law, I would not in the slightest bit be surprised. There's got to be an NDA. There's got to be there's got to be some kind of paperwork tying him up. Um, so the answer is that, yes, he knows it's a scam, but he can't. I, I think he knows now if he didn't know at the end of the first year, I'll give him a pass because that information didn't yeah, come out until later. Help. And mm-hmm. and again, there was probably paperwork signed before all that happened. I'll give him a pass. If he doesn't know now, then he's living in a bubble, and somebody needs to to let him know that he's living in a bubble, or somebody's preventing him from finding out about this. But I have a feeling that it's it's just a legal thing. He's tied up in paperwork, you know. But if he's if he's involved again next year, then we know because now. All of this, the contest isn't even over yet, or is it? Did it end? It's over. It's over. Uh, who won? They, they haven't announced a winner. It takes oh, them a while to announce a winner, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
the person they already picked to win, they just can't come out and say this is the person <laughs> we want. It seems to me if the winner was picked weeks ago, it'd be a pretty easy announcement. Of course, then again, I would I would have ended a face of horror fucking competition on Halloween, but who the hell am I? You and know, there won't be any pictures in Rue Morgue magazine either. Yeah, yeah, seriously. So um, that's what I think about the situation with Kane right now. I don't know the dude. I don't know his money issue, you know, his money situation. I do know a little bit about the law and I know a little bit about contract law. And I would be willing to wager that's why he hasn't said boo because he hasn't said anything about nothing it. about the competition. You know, not not positive or negative. He's had no nothing. no word about it whatsoever. So that leads me to believe I would like to think, giving him the benefit of the doubt, because knowing he, he because he's promoting projects like you said, he promotes he, projects that are not even his on a regular yeah. basis, daily yeah. basis, promoting something, and he doesn't say one thing about this fucking contest. That's that's why I think it's a paperwork thing, because I think that if he comes out, think about it. If if you know that you're tied up in a scam, legally you've been tied up in a scam, there's nothing you can do about it without serious repercussion legally, because I'm sure whoever these people are running this contest have this shit locked down tight legal. Yes. You can't fuck around, especially when it comes to the legal, the donation side, and the, you know all that. You cannot fuck around with that stuff. They do not play when it comes to that type yeah. of thing. So I would imagine they have a lawyer or two or five, and I'm sure everything that goes into this contest is locked fucking down before day one, because once the contest starts. Nothing can change because here's the thing with contest, and a lot of people don't know this. Any contest, any contest you, you've ever seen, a fast food giveaway contest, uh, you know, a radio giveaway, wh whatever it is, if there's a contest and that contest includes a prize being given out to the public, you are required by law to give that prize out to the public. Yep. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. If somebody wins a million dollars at McDonald's Monopoly, you have to give them that million dollars. Now, yep. there was a whole documentary about that, which was really good, how that whole thing was a scam. But you ha that's the law. There's no You have to do it. So from day one of this thing, everything has to be locked down because there's no... Because there's the no, winner... Because the winner... So people keep asking, yeah. well, how come you want to interview the last winner? They, I can't. I can't. Right. They, she has signed something that... if you, you signed an NDA. Her, if you, if you watched her on her Instagram, she doesn't talk about when somebody asks what a contest she she's vaguely talks about it. I actually put, put, I put in my thing. Somebody asked her if she got the movie role that they promised her, yeah. and she said no. And that guy Jim responded <laughs> instantly to to that fucking thread saying, "Hey, I'm working on this." Blah blah. blah. Like it was like, "Yo, shut the fuck yep. up." She signed an NDA. She can't talk about it. And unfortunately, depending on and, and, and this is the other this is the other thing, too. And, and again, I'm sure they have lawyers because you can't not have lawyers and do something like this. Whatever the NDA is that she signed, hopefully is only for a year. But I got a feeling it's probably for longer because they're going to ride this thing out. They're going to ride it out. So so going forward, going into year three. Cards are on the table at this point. People are watching these. People are watching your videos. That 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 I have seen your subscriber count grow, but I've also seen your view count grow mm -hmm. because of this series of videos. You're going to have opportunities to talk about these videos on other platforms as well. The more people know about it, the more next time this comes around, the more people are going to be like, nah, 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 nah. So. We'll know then. We'll know whenever they decide, if they decide to do another one, uh, when they decide to do another one, the day that they announce it, we'll know then what Kane's role in this whole thing is. Because I would have to imagine, <clears throat> even if they do have him, and I'm sure they have him under an NDA, I would imagine that his contract is probably year to year. If his agent is worth a damn, it's a year to year. There's no way he's signing a multi-year deal for something like this because there's no guarantee that it would last. It's so unknown. So, so, so if his agent, assuming he has an agent, uh, if his agent is worth a damn, 
This is a year to year contract. So now that the second year is over, even if he's still signed under the NDA, he can't talk about it next year. He sh- if he's above board, he won't be involved. I can't speak for the guy. I've never I've never even met him. But again, going from what I know, the, the little bit I know legally. That to me, that that is what I would be willing to wager is his situation right now. He can't talk about it. And, you know, because if he does, he could open himself up for litigation. And for somebody like him, a lawsuit like that could be detrimental. Wipe him away. Yeah. Yeah. Because because, you know, the people who are running this thing. I mean, is wouldn't sue him for, you know, fifty thousand dollars or whatever they paid him. You know, they wouldn't sue him for just that. They'd sue sure. him for a couple of million dollars because he discouraged or he, he just, yeah, not discouraged, but, you know, he spoke poorly of their property in public. Mm-hmm. They'd sue the shit out of him. So uh, we'll see. We'll see if he's involved again next year. If he is, then, yeah, he's guilty as the rest of them. If yeah. he's not, I would be willing to wager that's why. Because, I mean, I mean, you watched it even one with the Buffalo Bill House. Yeah, and no one knows of that place, right? So you would think that if someone would have won it, you would have did a video or pictures of this person walking around in the hole with the bucket and this and that to say, hey, look, I'm promoting. I'm promoting this fucking place. Nothing. Why doesn't Whiskey Tango have any pictures of it? Nothing. You mean, you mean to tell me in 2022? Nothing. But she, a but she's horror a face fan. of horror. But she's a face of horror from last year. Why did they not will her ass out this year to speak? A horror fan went to the Buffalo Bill House and didn't take pictures? Bullshit. It's fucking weird. Either she took pictures and are not allowed to show them, or she wasn't allowed to take pictures in the first place. I would love to talk to her. Like, I would love love to sit down and talk with her. Just, and and I understand if she's under under paperwork, (laughs) believe me, I get it. But there's there's a she is the part of the story here that is the only thing that's still up in the air because if she hasn't she, if she can't say anything she hasn't said anything if she, you know she probably can't but but there's no I mean come on well, when she if, talks if, about it it's like she's under witness protection yeah like if you or she I had won a, a contest like this and and got to have this really cool experience yeah I, I I'd be talking about it all the time. You know, like like I would be like, oh yeah, we did this, and then it was this, and then and then this, and I mean, okay. you couldn't get me to shut up about it. It I, would be I, all. I, I'd be, I'll, be, I'll be posting pictures everywhere, just saying yeah. nothing. I'd be like, look, here's the basement. Look, this is yeah, mm-hmm. no, not a fucking. Come on, you know, yeah. They, they, they've got. I would I would be willing to wager they have a very they they have everything locked down. They're, the rules are what they are. There's probably no outside pictures, no outside videos. Um, you know, was she allowed to have someone accompany her when she went to do this this thing? She should have been. She should have been allowed to bring somebody. Uh, you know, I mean, th- there's her story is is the part that's missing. The, the, mm-hmm. the after the afterwards she, is her what's story missing. covers up all the mystery. Like yeah. if she came out honestly and spoke, it would solve everything. Yes. If it's real, she, if it's a scam, yep. if she was she, actually she in answer, the contest. Yeah, she could answer all those questions. She's the only one who can. Mm-hmm. Because because the people running the contest won't. You know, no. so so it's like how long how long until your paper works out? And Kane you know, or Jim and Kane and Jim and none of them are gonna come on my show and talk about it. Fuck no. Yeah. No. Oh, no. <laughs> no, because oh, no. like I said, Kane, like I said, I ten to one says Kane can't talk about it. And <laughs> and and obviously, you know, the other the, the person involved, the person running it. Jim was gonna come on, on my show originally. And somebody must have said something to him. And he abruptly canceled the day of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He must have said some 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 something, somebody, and they were like, yo, you you can't do that shit. Oh, I'm sure. If he's involved in the in the circle of people there, I would imagine that again, everything is paperwork. Everything is contracts. I would love to get a look at the paperwork and I would definitely amazing. I would definitely love to talk to, to Whiskey Tango. 
It's an amazing uh, scam. It's an amazing it, scam. I mean, like, like the depths of it. I mean, it's impressive. I have to, I have to give credit where credit is due. It, it is, it is some mastermind level shit. I, I will give, I will give them credit it, for that. It's I mean, unfortunate it's so many, that they're ripping people off. It's so many fucking layers. Like, yeah. I, I was even saying, like, they, they don't even have the LLC registered to a company. They got it registered to these different fucking agents. So you can't even narrow it down because it's all these competitions, they have the same format, the same company, but they got to register to different fucking agents. So you can't fucking attach it to one person. Nope. Nope. Because if you took one down, you could then take them all down. And that's not good for business. It's so fucking smart. Oh, it, it, it's the setup behind brilliant. it is, is brilliant. It <laughs> you know, it, brilliant. it's a criminal enterprise. <laughs> but and, it's a well-organized criminal enterprise. And then having the fucking Facebook groups that are fucking scams too. Oh my god, it's, it's fucking brilliant, man. It's fucking brilliant. Think about it. You have three or four friends who have no job, and you call them up, and, and you're a millionaire, and you call them up and you say, "Hey, if I were to give you twenty dollars an hour, you know, forty hours a week, and all you have to do is go online and talk shit about this guy who runs a YouTube channel," yeah. Yeah, I love you to death, man, but I talk shit about you for $20 you an hour. <laughs> you would. You would. But, but, but it's a smart scam, too. My loyalty is a price, you know. I mean. Exactly. But, but, but it's smart, too, because I said, too, because they attack an industry that's dying, that's on, 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 on life support, the magazine industry, because all these scams are tied to a magazine. Maxim, yeah. Inc. Magazine, they attack to, what's it called, that's dying. Yeah, and I don't. And it's they're still hanging on. A little, they're still hanging on to the threads, and it would not surprise me if the person behind this whole thing is involved in publishing somewhere along the line. Because why tie in all the magazines, especially in 2023? What's the circulation now on, you know, like outside of like time and life and, you know, and the the, the, the tabloids at the at the who newspaper? Who, reading, who the fuck is reading, reading Ink Magazine or Nobody. Blue Morg or Maxim? I used to read that shit back in the day when it was twenty dollars for a whole the year subscription. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? But that shit is fucking magazine subscriptions. I am shocked how much they are. Like you don't even see them. You don't even see them in doctor's office anymore. No, because the, because the problem with the magazine subscriptions is that people stop buying them. So the only way to break even was to start charging more. And it's like, no, guys, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. Nobody wanted it at $25. Nobody wants it at $75. What are you, fucking no. high? That's insane. No. And I, I said, I, I said, anybody who has a Rue Morris subscription that's going to fucking comment, no one has commented and said, oh, why do I have a Rue Morris subscription for $70 yeah. or $60? Because nobody no does. Has said that. Like, like anybody who says, I'm, I'm a Rue Morris fan, I read them right now religiously, I'm, it's a fucking liar. Yeah, it's like no, you don't. No, Fucking lie. Not, not, not unless you're still getting your copy at Barnes and Noble. That's that's you know, <laughs> that that's you're, you're not ordering it online. You're not. No. It's not coming to your house. You no know, one. You fucking break. But here's the thing: they post all of their fucking content for free on, on their social media, so you don't yeah. even need to buy the magazine. Yeah. That, that's the, that's the reason why a lot of these magazines failed. They go, we're gonna get a website. Everybody's gonna have a website. We're gonna have a, okay, but now you have a website. Why do I need to buy your fucking magazine? <laughs> you, you, you know what's not taking up space in my house anymore? Magazines. <laughs> you can go on to, to the Slash app, which is free, which I kind of bad now. Though. But you can go on there and Ruben Morgan is on there and they post all of their new shit on there. Like, why would I pay $70 for what's going on? I can see all your shit for free. You didn't really bad mouth Ruben Morgan. I didn't bad mouth. Or not not Ruben Morgan, uh, Slasher app. I'm a Slasher Here, app. Here's, here's the thing mouth. with Slasher app. And, and, and Damon's a good guy. And I, I got I to gotta talk to him. I got to really sit down and talk with him. Um, the problem with the slasher app is the problem with most social media apps. It's there's a certain group of people who belong to the app. And then there's a certain group of people who know exactly what they need to do to get interactions with the people who are registered with that app. And I had no problems with people. You know, hey, you want to put on your little sexy Halloween costumes and, you know, what? Do what you're going to do, that's fine, and you're going to get that interaction that you want. It'd be nice if Slasher wasn't the place for that. It would be nice if we had a dedicated horror. Like, there's plenty of websites for that. There's plenty of, of Facebook, Instagram, media. all yeah. of them. 
plenty of social media for that. It's like, can we kind of, you know, and, and I understand that Damon's just doing this by himself and, you know, there's a lot involved in this shit and I, and I get it. Um, and I'm hoping, you know, I hold that hope for Slasher. I, I think there's potential there. Um, I think if he can get a good solid team around him and people, I can say it's like, a great idea. It's a great idea. And people can kind of be like, okay, look, this is what this is for. It's not for all of this. You want to do all this other stuff? Fine. Do it. There's plenty of other places for you to go do it. And yeah. and, and I think that's that's the problem in a lot of people because it's very discouraging as a heart like you know, you're you're a horror creator, you're you're a horror filmmaker, and you go and you post your 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 teaser trailer up there and it gets like nine reactions. And then like right on top of it is a picture of some chick with her tits hanging out. And there's like <laughs> sixty reactions. And it's like, yeah, I get it. But it's frustrating as hell because that's what you're supposed to be here for is to spread the word of horror, not your tits. And and nothing against your tits. Tits are great. But that's that's the problem with slasher. And 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 hopefully Damon will be able to resolve that. Before it, it, I it just I, 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 I didn't think I was bashing, but he commented no. on it. Like I was no, bashing I him. No, exactly. I don't think so. and, and I don't think I was bashing. I was giving criticism. I mean, yeah, constructive yeah. criticism. There, there, there's some stuff that could be improved that would make it a, a better experience, I think, for the horror fans. It, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. And like I said, I mean, it's a new thing. It's only been doing yep. it like a year. Um, you Not know, four years. Four years? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> so new. Yeah. yeah. Say, you know, I, I hope it does because it, it, it is a good idea. It's and, an excellent and, idea. You know, the, the, I, I have seen a lot of people. Uh, you know, a lot of creative people on there, and, and I have seen some some you know some cool art, and I've seen some cool, you know, music clips and stuff like that. But it does it does get annoying having to sift through, you know, all of the crap, you know. And again, I understand that if this is your thing, this is what you know you think your calling in life is. Okay, fine. But I don't know. To me, it's just it's distracting. It gets frustrating after a little while, and then I just move on to something else in my day because I'm not you just getting go to Facebook. You yeah, just go to Facebook. If, I'm I mean, not getting everything that I'd like to be getting out of it. But mm-hmm. you know, again, hopefully things will it's continue time. to move forward. So, what's your softball question? A oh, softball question. Your shirt. My shirt. <laughs> this is uh, Wendigo, uh, old-fashioned cannibalism. Nice. <laughs> um, I, I can't remember where I, I saw it online. I get like you know those feeds feeds in Facebook all the time. Oh, t-shirt, you know, sixteen dollar mm-hmm. t-shirts, stuff like that. It was one of those, um, and I just I, I caught my eye. I was like, oh, I gotta get me one of those. So it's one of the shirts that I wear to cons and stuff usually when I go out. This one, or um, I got a Michael Myers one that says, uh, "Wearing a mask in public and socially distancing since 1978." <laughs> Um, I like that one a lot. Uh, like there, there's a few I try to. I, I you know, it's like a, I, I've got a pair of glow in the dark shoes with eye, like eyes that glow in the dark. Um, yeah, if I when I go out to meet the people, I got to look the part, you know. So yeah, it is the purveyor of nightmares and nostalgia. I need to look, you know, and and now producer of, you know, people see me out in in public and they and they realize. I dress the part, by the way, for the show. I wear yeah. hard stuff. I wear hard stuff at Park convention sometime, majority, no, nah, 50% of the time. But like, no, nah, I'm not, like, if, you, if you run into me in public, I'm not wearing horror stuff. Like, right. Yeah, I, I, you know, show. it's, um, you know, it, 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 I'm not one it, of those it, 24 it, hours. I'm not those 24 seven horror guys. No, That's not me. me. Not me That's either. Not me. Because, me. A, I don't have that, that much wardrobe. Um, me either, too. I've really kind of like as I've gotten older, kind of narrowed down what I wear a lot. So it's like, yeah, I've got like, you know, a half a dozen T-shirts that I wear, some pants, you know, if I have to go out and somewhere nice, I own some suits, you know. But this is for the most, you know, T-shirt. It's cold here. So I've got my my fuzzy flannel, um, you know, so it's it's all good. Yeah, it doesn't Wendy. Wendy goes, though. I wish like I said, I wish I could remember where I got Love it. Love that shirt, man. Love that shirt. Mm-hmm. Love that shirt. Well, so, Christopher. Yeah. That's it's been a you know, pleasure, man. It's been, it's been crazy a pleasure. busy, but we uh we got big things in the works. You and I have talked. We got big things in the works. It's it's going to be a good it's going to be a good year. Um, twenty twenty four is going to be big, I think, for all of us. And 
I'm looking forward to it. Uh, thank you again for having me on. Uh, thank you for having the writers on. The authors love it. Uh, you know, everybody I talk to, they they dig talking to you. I'm like, look, he's the easy guy to talk to. It's it's you know, and and that makes it we've, we've that makes it especially with a lot of the uh, a lot of the, this is the first podcast for a lot of people. A lot of them are are extremely nervous, and I make people comfortable. That's that's what I tell them. I'm like, look, Travis is easy guy to talk to. He'll he'll help you out. He'll lead you, you know, with with conversation. It's like it's all good. That's why I recommend you. So it's all good, my friend. It's wonderful to see you as always. Yes. Everybody, please check out Psychotoxin and also go down and email my man Christopher if your kids are interested in the reviewing the book contest, definitely shoot him an email going to be a lot of fun yes also go over to roku and check out american horrors yes. my man christopher <laughs> and, and hart fisher uh hart and fisher. again roku american horrors or uh, american horrors.net uh 24 hour streaming horror so check us out and uh you'll see some great new stuff from us coming up in the new year including my show um so check us out follow us follow travis always follow travis don't i will i will sell travis everywhere because travis is good at what he does and you guys should love travis so brother good to see you we'll talk soon all right all right well thank you for coming to the horror room i'm travis bruce and that's christopher pelton that's me all right have a good one have a good night